Hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Michal Brigiden. Uh, I'm a cloud solutions architect at PGS Software and a security researcher after hours. <clears throat> Uh, thank you for joining uh, my session today. And uh, this is my second session in this uh, ITIS Live uh, webinar. Uh, today, I want to share with you three stories uh, from my research. And uh, I will uh, show you how easy it is to uh, exploit uh, even small vulnerabilities, uh, how to chain them to access different uh, cloud resources. Uh, I'm also an AWS ambassador, so my uh, main focus is to hack into AWS accounts, but this uh, may be uh, any other uh, cloud uh, at the end. Uh, my uh, first uh, story starts from uh, Kubernetes. <clears throat> Uh, you may know uh, Kubernetes is a very common tool uh, to uh, run different uh, containerized apps uh, now, and uh, mostly in the cloud. So let's start with Kubernetes uh, and uh, how to exploit Kubernetes. Uh, to play with it, uh, you need to have access to Kubernetes APIs. And uh, it is not uh, a rare situation where uh, teams uh, expose Kubernetes API publicly. So anyone can access the Kubernetes API to ask for secrets, config maps, or uh, pods configuration. And uh, even though it's, uh, it's public, uh, they decide to turn off role-based access control. So anyone with uh, just the IP address of this API uh, can extract uh, sensitive information from it. And in one of my... Uh, uh, well, not one, but in this story, I found uh, interesting things in uh, secrets, Kubernetes uh, secrets. Uh, these are base64 uh, encoded uh, variables. So uh, I was able to extract uh, first uh, AWS uh, access and secret uh, uh, keeper from it. Uh, and uh, when I tested it, this access key only gave me access to uh, S3. So only some uh, objects and files uh, from S3. But uh, I also found uh, Jenkins admin credentials uh, in uh, secrets. So I decided to uh, dig deeper. <clears throat> On uh, pods list, uh, I found um, Jenkins app uh, running uh, in uh, one or two pods. So uh, using uh, kubectl, I was able to forward uh, port 8080 to my local machine. And then using uh, Jenkins admin credentials, log into that uh, instance. And uh, there uh, I found uh, many projects with uh, different workspaces. And in these workspaces, there were config files with plain text credentials, different credentials than the ones in Kubernetes API. So uh, I was able to extract, uh, <clears throat> extract uh, access key that gave me access to uh, SQS queue and uh, some Lambda functions. But this was not enough. So I checked uh, credentials uh, in Jenkins, because uh, as you may know, if you are admin user on Jenkins, you can decrypt every single credential there. So uh, I decided to uh, check what's there. And uh, I found the GitHub credentials, valid GitHub credentials, uh, that allowed me to log into GitHub repository and uh, just browse different uh, repositories, different uh, source codes of, of apps. And uh, also, uh, I was able to <clears throat> use uh, Jenkins uh, script uh, to uh, run different commands. And uh, one of these commands was just a, a CURL to uh, metadata of the instance. And uh, I got access to Jenkins uh, temporary credentials from IAM role attached to that machine, AWS IAM role. And uh, this Jenkins uh, was used to build uh, cloud infrastructure. So the role attached to, to it uh, has all uh, permissions to interact with every single service on this uh, uh, AWS account. And now, uh, from the perspective of uh, this uh, Kubernetes owner or the infrastructure owner, what went wrong? First of all, public resources. Uh, usually, uh, teams are exposing their resources because they don't know how to secure them correctly. And um, sometimes uh, they may think that, uh, oh, it's just the IP, so... Uh, who may know my, my IP, it's a random IP, so let's just leave it like that. 
And uh, these uh, environments uh, are left there for a long time because they are, for example, out of scope for uh, penetration tests uh, that you decide to run on your production environment uh, because it has to be compliant. But hey, it's a non-prod environment uh, and we can uh, just leave it like it is. Uh, also, uh, some explanations that I heard from uh, different companies is that uh, uh, oh, our people work from different locations. Right now, they are work from home, and uh, we have uh, uh, some people in Poland, some people uh, in Germany, some in UK or India, and uh, they all want to uh, want to connect to our infrastructure. But VPN is so expensive. So yeah, that's uh, that's what happens when you expose your uh, resources. Uh, then uh, next uh, next point here, uh, if there is a security feature enabled, uh, don't disable it just because it's easier to uh, interact with uh, with this uh, product with with this tool. And um, as I mentioned before, uh, just because it's a random IP doesn't mean that uh, nobody knows it. And uh, there are many uh, scanners, online scanners, uh, that uh, ping every single port on every single IP and just uh, index uh, responses, banner responses from them. So uh, I may not know your IP, but I know what to look for. And uh, <clears throat> Also, uh, if there is a possibility to encrypt your data, just do it. Uh, because when I find encrypted uh, credentials, uh, as a security researcher, I may, may not want to uh, spend my time to decrypt it. Uh, I want uh, low-hanging fruits uh, looking for something. So this is uh, another security layer. And uh, uh, what uh, usually uh, different teams say that, oh, we need to and uh, the decryption when we uh, want to decrypt, uh, when we want to encrypt and decrypt something. So uh, maybe just don't do it, it it's easier. And uh, also uh, when working with uh, different, uh, di di different uh, cloud projects, uh, uh, I found out that uh, many uh, firewall security groups are open for everyone uh, because uh, people are using different uh, dynamic IPs working from home. and. Uh, uh, they decided to uh, let everyone in uh, instead of uh, creating a VPN or another uh, secure connection. And uh, last but not least, the principle of least privilege. Uh, uh, this is the most common problem uh, when uh, all team members get admin access because uh, Maybe in a few months they will need to use another service on the cloud, or maybe they will need to reconfigure uh, something else uh, when uh, when their colleague is uh, on leave. Uh, so uh, yeah, they just all get admin access, and uh, they may not need it, but they have it. So uh, when it leaks, uh, it gives the attacker access to everything. Uh, for the CICD tools, uh, when we have tools that are uh, managing uh, our cloud infrastructure uh, and uh, tools that uh, deploy, for example, Terraform to build uh, cloud resources, these tools usually have uh, uh, high permissions and uh, usually have a policy allowing them to interact with, uh, with the cloud. So uh, it is important to protect the tool and not letting everyone create a job or run any job with uh, random uh, commands on that tool. Uh, just um, just the, the jobs that are uh, confirmed to be valid and uh, reviewed and approved. And uh, last thing, uh, many, many containers uh, that uh, I accessed, many different pods, uh, uh, were running on a root user because it's a default one for most teams to <laughs> to use. So just don't do it. Uh, if the app doesn't need uh, root access, uh, then uh, uh, create a cr create a user for that uh, for that app with a specific set of permissions uh, for it. Uh, let's jump to uh, the second story. And that one starts from a Symfony Profiler tool. Symfony is a PHP uh, framework, uh, very common framework. And uh, Profiler is a tool uh, that helps developers to build the app. Uh, it uh, shows the, so the server configuration, all parameters, uh, all uh, requests uh, with request history including um, post uh, requests with plain text uh, parameters. So uh, what I uh, 
try to achieve here. So I try to find a login uh, request and uh, login request with uh, plain text uh, login and password. And uh, I managed to do that. But uh, what I uh, also wanted to, to, to do is to extract uh, configuration of, uh, of this framework. There are two ways to do that. Uh, in old uh, versions, uh, there was a uh, possibility to open any file uh, using uh, functionality of the profiler uh, tool. And uh, that file would be, uh, <clears throat> would be parameters YAML. But in newer versions, uh, this tool uh, just shows you uh, environment variables uh, in uh, the, the def default view. So uh, you don't need to open any file. It's just there for you. Sometimes uh, juicy uh, variables are there, like uh, uh, PyPal credentials or, or AWS uh, credentials or uh, other uh, login and password combination. But uh, I found a login and password in the request history. Using this login uh, and uh, password, uh, I was able to log into dev environment because this was all dev environment. And uh, these credentials were uh, admin uh, credentials. So well, I logged in as admin user on dev environment. Uh, I checked that uh, app. There were a lot of uh, different uh, different views, uh, different tables with uh, uh, multiple uh, different informations and a lot of data. This data looked uh, real, looked like a production data. Uh, but uh, I wasn't sure that that was production data. So uh, I looked at, uh, at the URL. The URL said that it was dev.example.com. So let's remove dev and uh, try a production one. I used the same uh, login and password uh, combination on production environment. And guess what? Uh, these were also valid for production environment because it was uh, a copy uh, of production database on dev environment. So uh, using, uh, using credentials uh, leaked on uh, dev environment, I was able to log in as admin on production environment and was able to see every single uh, piece of data that's there. And it was uh, a big uh, amount of data. It was production uh, CRM. Uh, and uh, it, also, uh, it also gave you ability to uh, use single sign-on to access many different internal apps, like a webmail. So instead of accessing data, I'm a white hat. I don't want your data. I just want to show you how vulnerable you are. So I try to dig deeper. I need access to your cloud, not your data. So using webmail, uh, I uh, scanned uh, the inbox and found uh, emails from uh, AWS. Emails with AWS invoices and trusted advisor. So uh, I tried to log in on a root user uh, of the AWS uh, account using this email uh, from webmail. And uh, this was a valid, uh, valid username. So I decided to reset a uh, password and uh, received the rest password link on this uh, inbox. I reset the password and logged in as a root user on, uh, on this AWS account. It was an organization management account. Uh, so I had access to all accounts in the organization. There was no MFA, so no problem. I'm in and I can do whatever I want. And now uh, what went wrong for, for that company? First of all, production data on a non-prod environment. Uh, it's a very common uh, case when team want, wants to uh, test uh, production only uh, issue or bug on dev environment. So they just copy the whole database uh, and uh, uh, work on it. And uh, it's not a very good idea because uh, dev environments are not uh, that secure. And uh, when someone hacks into your dev environment, uh, uh, he or she gets access to uh, all data from production. Also, uh, it's not a good idea to use uh, the same uh, username password combination for both environments. Uh, same reason when uh, someone accesses your uh, non prod environment and extracts login and password or uh, finds a way to uh, see plain text login and password for your dev environment, uh, just be sure it doesn't work for your production one. And uh, also, very common scenario, uh, companies decide to uh, move to the cloud, but they don't know how to do it properly, or they just want to have it very simple. So just, just use one cloud account and uh, deploy production and non-production uh, resources there. 
it's uh, bad on so many different uh, levels, uh, starting from uh, your uh, team uh, removing a resource by mistake, uh, leading to uh, big issues with access availability and accessibility of your resources. And then uh, another problem is when uh, cloud credentials uh, leak in your dev environment, uh, these credentials also allow the attacker to access your production uh, resources. And uh, <laughs> this is also an uh, interesting one. Uh, so uh, shared email for different uh, different services. Uh, here, uh, I, what I uh, what I found was uh, a single email account for AWS, uh, for uh, uh, GitHub, uh, and uh, for uh, Datadog or something else for for uh, logs and uh, monitoring. So uh, when I got access to a single uh, email account, uh, I was able to infiltrate many different services. Also, if you decide to use a single uh, email account for uh, for this purpose, then uh, you have uh, your team uh, where everyone has access to this account, or most of the uh, guys in the team have access to that uh, account. And uh, when they uh, move to a different project or uh, when they leave company, uh, if you don't remember to rotate these credentials to change password, they may still have, have access and uh, uh, exploit it. Also, when uh, there is no uh, single person responsible for uh, uh, for securing that account, uh, no one is doing it because, uh, uh, hey, we are not using MFA because uh, three different uh, team members are uh, logging in and we don't know how to do it properly or uh, no one ever said that I should uh, secure it. So it's like I got it uh, two years ago. And uh, multi-factor uh, authentication. Uh, this, is, uh, this, this is the point where uh, my research fails if uh, there is MFA enabled, uh, uh, usually, because uh, I don't want to uh, hack MFA. I just want uh, low-hanging fruit. So please enable MFA on all your services where it's possible to enable. And uh, uh, if you are responsible for policies in your companies, uh, be sure that MFA is required and not just uh, uh, not, not just allowed. Uh, because uh, when it's not required, then people say, oh, hey, I don't need it. It's not required. And uh, then they don't set it up and uh, then I can hack them. And now uh, our uh, final story. This one starts from a public GitHub repository. Yes, public one. And uh, it's very easy to uh, search through, so search for anything on uh, on the GitHub. Uh, uh, you just need to be logged in and you can search for anything in uh, any repository. So if you know what you're looking for, you can find uh, uh, juicy config files, uh, a lot of them every single day. Uh, I found a config file with uh, variables uh, that uh, were supposed to be uh, Office 365 login and password, but uh, uh, these, uh, these credentials were encrypted. And uh, these encrypted variables were used by a Java, Java app. So I decided to check the whole repository, uh, check the whole app, and uh, I found a Java class with decrypt function and a hard-coded secret key. So uh, it was pretty easy to, uh, to decrypt all uh, variables. And I got access to Office 365 uh, email and password. Uh, running my, uh, my script for Office 365 uh, credentials, uh, uh, I, found, um, I, found, I found more than 2,000 uh, accounts uh, in that uh, Active Directory with uh, four or five different domains. and. Uh, all uh, plans available uh, on uh, on that account. So after logging in uh, to office uh, office.com, uh, you can see a list of uh, all uh, previously opened files. When I logged in, uh, I found a PDF file that uh, was uh, named like a Jira configuration guide or something like this. Uh, when I opened it, uh, it was a guide uh, prepared by an uh, administrator or uh, uh, someone who was uh, installing uh, Jira for that company. It was a nice step-by-step -step guide, and the last slide was the best. The last slide uh, was just uh, a table of all variables used, 
including a login and password for admin user of that Jira. So uh, what was my next, next step? I just wanted to find this uh, Jira and open it. When I uh, found it, uh, the, the link uh, somewhere in uh, different files, uh, I opened this, uh, this Jira app and uh, using uh, uh, previously found a login and password, I was able to log into that as admin. And uh, I was able to check all uh, projects, all tasks. And uh, one project was related to AWS. So uh, I opened one task that uh, uh, said that someone has to create IAM user for uh, external service. And this external service was uh, SQL CI or something like that. And uh, when I checked comments, uh, the last comment uh, contained a plain text uh, access and secret key. Uh, so I just grabbed them and uh, these were a uh, case for an uh, IAM user with administrator access policy attached. And now what went wrong for this, uh, this company? First of all, uh, hard-coded sensitive data. Uh, it's uh, not a good idea to hard-code your credentials in the config files uh, stored in a repository, the same repository that uh, you store your application. Because uh, the whole team has access to this repository, they all can uh, see these credentials. And every time you have rotation in your uh, team, uh, you would need to uh, remove this uh, this password and uh, replace it with a new one. You just don't want to do it. Uh, it's a lot easier and uh, a lot uh, safer to use uh, some kind of vault uh, tool like Secrets Manager or something like that and allow the app to read uh, their set of, uh, of uh, secrets from, from that. And uh, it's, uh, it's also not a good idea to keep your uh, encryption keys uh, in the same place that you have your uh, decrypt function, encrypt decrypt function. Uh, because uh, hey, it's uh, it's easy to just grab uh, grab it and uh, use it against you. If uh, if you encrypt it, be sure that it's not that easy to decrypt it and store the key in some kind of vault or other parameter store. And uh, also, uh, what's very common when uh, someone uh, push uh, pushes uh, their credentials, their access keys by mistake and uh, pushes them to repository by mistake. Uh, the only thing that uh, this person is, tr is trying to do is to override uh, these credentials and, uh, and just forget it. Uh, hey, in, in the current, uh, current uh, uh, version, uh, it's not there. It's uh, some kind of full uh, value for, for this. So maybe no one notices it, but uh, there's Git history with uh, all previous values of, for that uh, variable. And uh, when you happen to uh, push your credentials or any credentials to the repository, override them, but then rotate them, Ch change this access key, change uh, password, and uh, do not leave it like that. Uh, also, uh, bad tool selection. Uh, that uh, public GitHub repository was selected by a, a help desk guy who uh, tried to uh, automate his work uh, by sending uh, emails uh, that were uh, comments on Jira or something like that. So he decided to use his own uh, login and uh, password uh, for uh, Office 365 just to use, uh, to use it to send emails from his, uh, his app. And uh, because he was not a developer, uh, he was just trying to uh, speed up his, his work, uh, make his life easier. He decided to use a free tool uh, with no uh, pre-configuration, uh, with no security uh, configuration in mind, just to store his code somewhere. And uh, this wasn't a good idea uh, to do it there. And uh, also a very common uh, mistake is to share a login and password for an account that you create for someone using same channel. For example, send it on Slack or Teams uh, or email or store them in a PDF file. If you want to send someone uh, his brand new account, uh, then uh, use different channels. For example, uh, send his uh, password in a one-time note uh, a link on Slack and uh, login on email or some, something like uh, something like that. That way, uh, if I see this message, I don't have both uh, uh, both parts uh, in the same place. 
And uh, no, the biggest problem, lack of security awareness. Uh, first of all, uh, sharing uh, credentials in Jira comments where everyone with access to that project can uh, see them. It's uh, not that, that good idea because you don't know who will see them and uh, who will use them. If these are credentials for a specific uh, use uh, for one of your tools, just uh, share them with the team that works with that tool and do not uh, leave them there in a system that uh, stores all this uh, information and gives access to more than uh, uh, people interested in it. Uh, also, uh, if you create a step-by-step -step guide, uh, do not put uh, credentials, valid credentials there. Uh, you can put example credentials uh, and not uh, valid admin ones uh, in a place that everyone at the company can uh, get and can open that. And uh, you know, the last thing, uh, when you want to uh, send emails, it's uh, many different, many different better ways than uh, using your, uh, your Microsoft 365 Office 365 account uh, and uh, using your credentials in, uh, in the function itself. So, this was uh, this was the last uh, the last thing that I have here. Uh, three quick stories. Uh, I will have more stories uh, later this year for you. There's a lot of uh, things going on, and uh, I want to share uh, this with you so your projects are secure. And uh, but for now, that's all. Thank you for uh, joining. Thank you for listening. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you, and uh, see you next time. Oh, if you want to contact me, uh, just ping me on LinkedIn. Uh, I'll be happy to help you. Thank you once again. Bye.